What's good, YouTube? You see the title, man? Let's get right into it. That's uh, check out Stone Resort out now. Come These your boy on are the top ten times NBA legends disrespected each other. And for number ten, we got the time that Reggie Miller thought he could just disrespect Michael Jordan and MJ. get away with it. To Richardson, one on two, one on three. was about to claw that man's eyes out but this was just one fight some legends take the disrespect to a whole new level because in number nine paul pierce is literally addicted to disrespecting lebron james yeah back in 2016 when paul became an analyst for espn the man decided to dedicate his entire tv career to trash talking lebron you know my hair is out the lead we wasn't afraid of lebron I would trade LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a big hit on his legacy, and I've already said he's not a top five player of all time. I don't want to hear none of this goat talk no more. Why do you think he moved to Miami, Beats? Huh? I don't know why you're huh? Paul, you right. I sent the U-Haul. Something, and I spit at him. And I'm not <laughs> sure if I hit somebody or not, but I spit in that direction. Did he just say he spit on LeBron? Ugh. But hey, at least you can tell the hate that he's got for Braun is real. Because for number eight, what if I told you one of the most legendary beefs in NBA history was one big lie? Back in 1998, the Bulls were taking on the Jazz in the NBA Finals. When in game six, with Chicago just one win away from the championship, Dennis Rodman and Karl Malone started doing something weird. Every other play, they were getting extra aggressive with each other. Almost like they were professional wrestlers or something. Now, you might be thinking, these dudes were just going at it, being competitive because the championship's on the line. Cool ass, I mean, man. that's what I thought. Until I heard the commentator say this. He and Carl Malone, regrettably, are scheduled to wrestle in one of those bogus events next month. Why Malone wants to lower himself to that is anyone's guess. And Rodman apparently wants to start the wrestling now. Yeah. It turns out that these two had a wrestling match coming up, and they were using their time in the NBA Finals to promote it. And this entire beef was fake. But I mean, it ended up being worth it for both of them. Because a month later, they wrestled on live TV, and they each got paid over a million dollars for it. Damn. I didn't think being disrespected could ever end well. Yeah, I'm gonna die, die, Especially you, you after hearing leave. about number seven, the time that Kobe Bryant's disrespect destroyed an NBA super team. Yeah. Back in 2012, Kobe and Dwight Howard teamed up on the Lakers. I'm talking prime Kobe and prime Dwight. These two were expected to dominate the NBA and grab rings left and right. But just three months into their first season, shit. Hit the fan! See, in a game against the Clippers, Dwight ended up tearing his shoulder. And this injury was so bad, he was told he needed surgery and could miss up to six months. So obviously, the man took a little break to recover. But uh, Kobe, he wasn't so understanding. Telling the media, we don't have time for Dwight's shoulder to heal. We need some urgency. <laughs> this man's got a busted shoulder. What do you want him to do? And Dwight was wondering the same thing, because later that day, he clapped back at Kobe in an interview, saying, Kobe's not a doctor. I want to play, but at the same time, this is my life. Yeah. This one incident caused tensions between Kobe and Dwight to skyrocket. They started bickering on the court, arguing in the locker room, and throwing shade at each other to the media. But the final straw came after they were eliminated in just the first round of the playoffs. And with that, Kobe snapped his fingers and made Dwight disappear. Yeah, Dwight signed with Houston and officially ended the Lakers super team. But I mean, it could have been worse for Dwight. He could have had to put up with Shaq, like in number six. Because the way that Shaq disrespects NBA legends should get him locked up in a straitjacket surrounded by squishy white walls in a federal penitentiary. Yeah. This man is a nutcase. 
See, uh, Shaq once said that as a kid, he was denied an autograph by Hall of Famer David Robinson. And ever since that day, Shaq was filled with a burning rage, swearing that if he ever made it to the NBA, he'd do everything he could to get revenge on Robinson. And that's what he did. Shaq against Robinson. Drive, stop, slam, dunk. Wow. Well, he just made David Robinson a poster child. But years later, after they both retired from the NBA, Shaq had a little confession to make. Set the record straight on the David Robinson story. And th the way I have heard it was that he stiffed you for an autograph when you were a, a kid and you held it against him. And you're not, now you're telling me this is not true? It's not true. I made it all up. Mr. Robinson, I apologize. Yeah. Shaq just completely lied about the entire thing. This man's a psycho. Now, the disrespect between Shaq and Robinson may have been fake, but in number five, the beef between Scottie Pippen and Charles Barkley is so real, it's been haunting them for decades. See, back in 1999, Scottie and Charles were teammates on the Rockets, and they were expected to win an NBA title. But instead, they were eliminated in just the first round of the playoffs. And with a loss that embarrassing, Scotty decided to blame Charles and request a trade. I mean, that's all pretty damn disrespectful. So our boy Charles, he wanted an apology. Well, uh, I think Scotty had something else in mind. I wouldn't get Charles Barkley an apology at gunpoint. So he could never expect an apology from me. If anything, he owed me an apology for coming and play with his star effect, but. Damn, Scotty. All you had to do was say sorry, man. Jeez. Yeah, King, but, uh, Charles, thankfully, and Scottie, everything got resolved. Scotty was traded to the Blazers, hey, Charles yeah, retired from the team. NBA, and the beef was over. Until two decades later, when in 2021, Scotty did a GQ interview to promote his new book, promote his bourbon, and diss Charles again saying, yeah, Charles is in the Hall of Fame, but when you think about success and winning, you don't speak of Charles Barkley's name. And uh, I mean, if you know Charles, he's not just gonna let that slide. So he came back as Scotty one final time. Scotty, I've always liked you, you're a good player. I ain't, we ain't never got to fight, we ain't never had no bad words. All of a sudden, I'm a bad guy because you got a book and a bourbon coming out. I just kind of felt sad. It's, you know what I felt like? When I'm watching TV and I'm seeing somebody who's like gonna box, and I'm like, yo man, you didn't save your money? You got to do anything? To like, this is crazy. Damn, legends hating on legends for over 20 years. That's petty. But Charles and Scotty's feud doesn't compare to number four, because Harden's beef with Giannis got him clowned by the entire world. Yeah. Back in 2019, Harden got beat by Giannis for the NBA MVP award. And he went on a full-blown media tour just to complain about it, telling GQ, I had eight 50-point games, two 60-point games in one season. And all the talk was about Giannis? There's no way. And then in a 2020 ESPN interview, he even said Giannis wasn't skilled at basketball. You know, but I wish I could just run, run and with seven feet and run and just dunk. Like that takes no skill at all. <laughs> Disrespectful. But just a year later, all that Giannis slander came back to bite hard in the ass. Because in 2021, when the Bucks faced the Nets in the Eastern Conference playoffs, Giannis got his revenge, eliminating Harden from the playoffs, leaving him so defeated that okay, Harden wouldn't even shake Giannis' hand. But that's not where this ends. Because after Giannis won the championship, the internet completely roasted Harden. Wait a second. Harden's not subscribed to the channel. What the hell is this guy doing? Everyone should be subscribed to the channel. But anyways, winning a championship, that's a crazy way to settle a beef. But we're entering the top three. So things are about to get even crazier. Because in number three, LeBron James cost himself an NBA championship by disrespecting the legendary Dirk Nowitzki. See, back in 2011, LeBron's Heat were facing Dirk's Mavs in the NBA Finals, when after game four, 
Dirk started feeling a little weird. The night before, I go home and start shivering a little bit, and started to call. I was like, oh, I probably just need to go to bed, and I'll be great tomorrow, but it just didn't happen that way. The trainer comes in and says, Dirk sick. Huh? Sick? What do you got? We like, we got the flu. Oh, I said, oh, no, 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 no. Not right now. Not in this moment. Yeah, Dirk caught the flu in the middle of the finals. And for some reason, instead of being a good sport about it, LeBron and Dwayne Wade decided to pull up to game five and mock the poor guy. Uh oh, did y'all hear me cough? I think I'm safe. <laughs> This was a bad idea. I mean, have you ever seen Dirk Nowitzki angry? Well, no one else had either, until now. In fact, this clip pissed him off so much that his own teammates literally forced him to watch it on replay so they could fire Dirk up for the rest of the series. And what do you know, it worked. Dirk went on a killing spree, winning two straight games and officially costing LeBron a championship. Dang it. Bron, you messed up, dog. But hey, some legends mess up a whole lot worse than that. Because for number two, I'm talking about the time that Kevin Durant stabbed his best friend Westbrook in the back. See, back in 2008, Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook became teammates, and they spent the next eight seasons becoming one of the greatest duos in NBA history. But in 2016, after being eliminated by the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals, KD secretly blamed Russ and felt like he never won a championship with him. So he started exploring his options, and despite telling Russ to his face that he'd return to OKC and still be his teammate, KD went out the very next day and stabbed him in the back, agreeing to sign with the Warriors, the same team that had just eliminated them both from the playoffs. Now, that all sounds really disrespectful, but the worst part about this situation is that KD didn't even call Russ before his decision went public. Russ literally found out what happened by checking Twitter. Damn, it's sad to see disrespect just destroy a friendship. But number one, destroyed something even greater. Cause the disrespect between Shaq and Kobe Mark the end of one of the most legendary teams in NBA history. And it all started in 1998, when during a Lakers practice, Shaq slapped Kobe in the face for trash talking. What a way to start a beef off. But uh, this was just the beginning of their beef. Cause in 2000, when Shaq showed up to training camp 20 pounds overweight, Kobe was so disgusted that he made fun of Shaq to a reporter saying, a guy selling donuts at 7-Eleven has more pride in his job than Shaq. And with that comment, this beef became personal. They started bashing each other to the media every chance they got. So by 2003, play. despite winning three straight beef. championships, the two could not stand each other. To the point where Shaq tried getting rid of Kobe for good, telling reporters, this is my team. Kobe doesn't like it. Let him go after the season. Mm, I don't think Kobe's gonna like that one. Yeah, after that, the two literally showed up to a Lakers practice trying to fight each other. So it became clear that whatever chemistry they had left was completely destroyed. And a few months later, they not only suffered their first loss in the NBA Finals, but they also told Lakers ownership to trade each other. So the next season, Shaq was sent to Miami, and with Kobe by himself, the once legendary Lakers team missed the playoffs for the first time in 11 years, officially ending their dynasty. But hey, it wasn't all that bad, because five years later in the 2009 NBA All-Star Game, they decided to officially squash their beef and become teammates again. Kobe is the best player in the league, so A plus on that side. And no A plus for you know, being a great guy. And he even let me you know, take the trophy home today for my boy. So appreciate him for that. All right, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, 
I could have watched them play I wasn't together. expecting a beautiful ending, man. But, uh, chance. you know what else I wasn't expecting? This video to pop up right like here. They would have stayed yeah. together. These are legends versus legends. And you need to watch it. So what are you doing? Click yeah, it. Though. Sick of, you know, catch on it. 